Sony Computer Entertainment, one of the leaders in technological innovations, has raised the bar on handheld gaming consoles with the introduction of the PlayStation Portable. The PSP changes not only the way we play games, but also how we communicate with each other. The PlayStation Underground had the rare opportunity to sit down with Masa Jitani. He's SEE's chief technology officer and the man responsible for the awesome task of guiding the PSP from the drawing board into gamers' hands. And the new gaming device had to feel just right in those hands. I think it, when a player uh, first uh, touched the uh, PSP, I think they feel very comfortable because it is very close to a uh, PlayStation controller. It is like driving a car. The steering wheel is a very important part of the, uh, the car. So we keep that kind of the feeling uh, when we design the PSP. The steering wheel is important, but it takes a great engine to make the PSP purr. The graphics technology in PSP delivers a balance of high level of compression while maintaining texture detail and quality. It's not about polygons anymore. We're on a surface curve technology. PSP has outstanding uh, graphics capability compared to any existing portable players. We incorporate non-polygon expressions such as the uh, surface uh, curve uh, expression. And I think game producers and the game uh, developers can uh, now can consider a new type of the effects by using that kind of technologies. The surface curve technology allows efficient use of memory, and we're talking a huge chunk of memory at your disposal. It's called UMD, and it's the optical storage format for the PSP. UMD is the uh, 60 millimeter small uh, optical disc with the 1.8 gigabytes of the capacity, which is very uh, big. Uh, that is the almost three times of the CD-ROM of today. Now the game can add streaming movies and uh, larger data of the game can be played. So it, it will be uh, kind of the quantum leap of the gameplay and the quality of the game by having that kind of the large capacity. UMD uh, can be used for game, but it can be used for uh, movies and the music. We have the UMD uh, media as a uh, read-only media. But uh, uh, PSP will have the uh, memory stack, so or if the movie uh, or music uh, is stored on the memory stick, you can play back uh, on the PSP as well. The PSP redefines versatility and capability for a portable gaming device. Check out how many different ways you can make a gaming connection. PSP has a Wi-Fi capability as a standard. Uh, that will be our first features, I think, in, in, in this kind. 802.11b will let you connect to other uh, PSP without connecting via internet. Also, PSP's uh, Wi-Fi technology allow you to uh, connect uh, the hotspot or access point in the public area. PSP supports uh, ad hoc mode. Uh, on Wi-Fi uh, connections. So if the four people have the PSP of the, uh, the same game, four PSP can be connected. By using the ad hoc mode, it's not necessary to connect any game servers. Not only the wireless, uh, PSP can connect PS2 or PC through USB connections. You can download uh, some data from PS2 so if you play PS2 game, but when you have to go out, you can check out the data to the PSP, and then you can continue the game on the PSP if the game supports the both PS2 and PSP. Now add in other options with peripherals. The PSP is also a communicator and a locator. We are planning to have the uh, peripherals such as the headset with a microphone, so you can chat if the uh, game supports the uh, chat functions with the USB camera, iToy type of uh, game will be available, and also with the USB GPS, new mobile uh, entertainment will be created by uh, identifying the, uh, the location of the players and exchange that kind of data. We're uh, looking into that technology by, uh, to enhance the uh, gameplay. With such a versatile feature-facing product, Masa Jitani obviously excels at multitasking. He has to juggle future concepts with practical methods of production. It's very exciting. There are a lot of the challenges uh, we need to overcome, but uh, it is fun and it is very exciting experiences to say, create something new uh, with the newest technologies.
It will also be exciting for those who pick up the PSP to live a surprising new lifestyle. I think that the main focus of the PSP is gaming with the uh, outstanding graphics capability. Wi-Fi capability will enhance the gameplay, particularly the ad hoc mode will be very uh, immersive. So that kind of the new experience will create a new lifestyle by using the PSP. PSP is a kind of the uh, entertainment lifeline. So whenever you go out, uh, I think they uh, uh, must have uh, the PSP with them. famous icons, at least in his mind, of the video gaming world is finally getting his own game on the PSP system. And it's about time. Okay, baby, I'll play along. Ever since the, um, the first um, Jack and Dexter game, actually, people have been wanting to play Dexter and to play as Dexter. He's, uh, in my mind, the best character uh, in the series. I mean, Dexter was this fantastic character. And he kind of had to ride around on Jack's shoulder for an awful long time. And now he sort of gets to take center stage. Just give me the bug juice, Pops, and make it a double. I'll hose down every creepy crawly that moves. Daxter is definitely a wiseacre. It was always kind of a contrast with Jack, who's more serious. Daxter's more crazy and fun-loving. And that's how the extra PSP is built. It takes extra artistic effort to create a new and improved version of a familiar character, even if that character sees himself as pretty perfect already. Everything with more than two legs start trembling, because the Daxtonator is in the building. I wanted to bring in a little more flavor because we needed Daxter to be on his own, to look great on his own now that he's without Jack. For example, we added a fur on Daxter, which was one of the great things that actually brought you know, Daxter to a different level. Daxter for PSP finds our intrepid hero on a search and rescue mission. After Jack was imprisoned at the end of the first installment of the Precursor Trilogy, Daxter spent most of his time planning an escape for his heroic partner, mostly in bars. But now it's time to take action. Besides, he had to rescue him in time for Jack, too. Jack! Hang on, buddy! The story in that game is what happens in the last week or so of Daxter going to save Jack, which is the first thing we see in Jack 2. Well, the first problem that Daxter has is uh, he needs a job. He is out of money. He's not really a very focused individual in a lot of ways. So he ends up scoring a job as a bug exterminator. As you follow Daxter on the job, some familiar and not so familiar faces pop up in all sorts of locations in this full-size platformer. The characters in the Daxter PSP game are mostly new. So there's Osmo, who is Daxter's boss. The Litter Extermination Company. Let me get right to brass tacks, young man. I need someone like you. Someone with your ingenuity. That's me. And there's Taryn, who's kind of his competition, but also his love interest, and you know how that goes. And you're too scruffy to be a creeper. So, what's your game? I could ask you to say, sweet cheeks. And also, a really fun character in the game is uh, Simon, who's Osmo's son, who's a dude. Thanks, dude. Welcome, to Dude! Developed Daxter, we actually used just as much resources as any PlayStation 2 title. The game uh, in total has close to 20 levels. You get to go to uh, places like the brewery uh, and all these places around the city that you didn't get to see um, uh, in the Jack games. You basically get, you know, the, the, the story, the cutscenes, all the high quality animation, the high production values, all in a handheld game and all in, in a smaller package, but without any compromises whatsoever. As Daxter ventures and battles through this world, check out his cool new moves and even cooler weapons and combo attacks. 
There are two things about Daxter that we really wanted to emphasize in how he moves and how you control him. We made sure that Daxter can get down on four feet and sneak past enemies, or he can climb walls on four feet. The second thing is Daxter's kind of crazy. And so the moves that he does have to have a certain amount of craziness to it. They, they, he gets really enthusiastic. Lest Dax forget, the main mission is to save Jack, but it's so easy to get sidetracked. There are precursor orbs and skull gems to collect, secrets to discover, and levels to unlock. And at long last, Daxter rules the world in his dreams. We created some really, really challenging and neat mini games based on the idea of Daxter taking a nap and dreaming that he's something fantastic. Well, the dream levels were, was a chance for Daxter to fall asleep and become the hero he'd never been. I know Kung Fu. As Daxter will tell you, small things come in great packages. Uh, no, it's great things come in small packages. Anyway, this is a great game for the PSP. Daxter is really the first game on the PSP that gives you a full-blown action platform game experience on a handheld. It was a huge undertaking. I think it was, it was greater than we ever imagined it was going to be. It's been our whole life pretty much for two years with every guy in, in this place. Has poured everything he had into, into this game. Um, Daxter is going to be you know, a really big milestone on, on PSP to show what the platform really can do and on it. And I think it's going to surprise people. I mean, it's a blast. It's been a blast to develop a game for Daxter because he's such a fantastic character. And it'll be a blast to play it as well. <laughs> Imagine a world where kind, squishy little creatures exist in peace and harmony. Suddenly, this world is invaded and things are turned topsy-turvy, and it's you that's doing the turning. This is Loco Roco. It's a very simple story, um, but it's kind of unique because I don't think it's ever been done before. You are a planet, actually. You're not a character. You're actually a planet that these Loco Rocos reside on. And um, one day, your planet gets attacked by these mojas, these little bouncy creatures that are, you know, coming to take over your planet. You have to be careful of them because they'll start eating you up. So what you have to do as the planet is to save the Lokoroko by tilting and rocking the world and uh, shaking it to help the Lokorokos escape from the moja and uh, flourish once again. It can be very difficult to design a game that has a simple look and feel, but features a deep gameplay system. The unique look, the 2D feel of this game was actually on purpose. The producer and the designers, they really wanted to make a simple looking game that has a deep system within it. By keeping the things simple, you can actually focus on what makes the game fun. The gameplay, the music the creatures and then like the, the way they interact with the world. What makes the game fun is those elements rather than how many polygons we can push out. But even though it is a 2D game, there is a lot of physics behind it. Uh, the programmers put in a lot of work in making the local local blob feel fluid and rubbery. The fluidity is enhanced by the unique design of the PSP. The controls are simple. Left and right shoulder buttons drive the gameplay. The producer, Kono-san in Japan, was actually envisioning a game specifically for the PSP because when he was holding the controller, he noticed that the PSP is perfectly adapted to use the shoulder buttons because of the way you hold it and the way the game system feels in your hand. So this game has really simple controls. All it is is the L button and the R button and the circle button. It falls in your hand and it plays without you thinking about it. And I think that's how you get immersed in it. And there's five really unique levels in Lokoroko. Inside those five levels, all of the stages have their own unique and important variations. This game is actually all about exploration. 
you can actually play through the average stage in about five minutes, but if you actually wanted to find all the local roko as well as all the mui mui hidden throughout the stage, you have to explore and just basically go every, every nook and cranny that you can find in the stage. So you're probably still wondering who or what are local rokos and where will you be playing with them? They're the little round creatures that you see. They're kind of a vital part of your planet because they actually help the plants and um, things grow on the planet. Well, there's actually six different colors of local roko and each color has its own personality and the uh, song that they actually sing that's very different from anybody else. When you start in the beginning, you only have the yellow Lokoroko, and as you clear more stages, you meet the other Lokorokos and you're able to play them. So once you have the all the six Lokorokos unlocked, then you can play them in any stage. There are some interesting group activities for the Lokoroko that will help you play the game. They group together or split apart depending on what obstacles come their way. The Lokorokos are both individual creatures and they can also form a collective. When they're individuals, they're very weak and they're very vulnerable. So they actually like to bunch up whenever possible. And so the reason why they gather up when you push the circle button is because you, as the planet, you're shaking the, the world and the local locals get scared. And so what they do is they try to bunch up together. And when they split apart, it's actually you causing a lightning strike, which actually startles them. And that's why they split apart. Toss in some very original music and an inventive language, and Loco Roco becomes a vivid and unique gaming experience. It's something that you really don't get with other games where you just grab onto it and it makes you smile. I think that's what makes this game unique and what makes it so much fun is just the joy it gives you. It's just one of those games that's appealing to everybody, from, you know, little kids to, to your grandmother, because you just fall in love with the character. They're just so cute. Once you start bouncing them around the world, you just get hooked. Still not convinced? Try LocoRoco out before you buy it. Download a demo from the LocoRoco website. On the PC, go to PlayStation.com, or from the PSP, go to the official PSP site. The truly unique feature about it is that you can sample it off the website. Before you buy the game, you can download it. You know, you can try it out for yourself to see what this is all about. You can also share a level with your PSP gaming friends. With the network capabilities of the PSP, you're actually able to share a level of LocoRoco with your friends. So if your friend, for example, doesn't have a copy of Local Roco. You can actually send a level to them that they can take home and try it out for themselves. So, you know, you can basically spread the word of this joy that is Local Roco.